everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady. With just a few more minutes of daylight, I'm going to take advantage and get this corner cleaned up in preparation of sowing more California poppies tomorrow. Now, California poppies, or Escholtia californica, are different than the normal poppies that I frequently talk about, which are Papaver somniferum. California poppies are much shorter overall, and when they find a place where they enjoy growing, they'll actually live for 12 months out of the year, blooming in the spring. So stay tuned to watch my progress and see my process for direct seeding California poppies. So I actually have three different varieties of California poppies, all of which I purchased from Lowe's. They were just in, you know, the seed area. And I think that what I have here existing right there, I think this was just like a regular orange, like maybe the Z-scape, which is one that I have here. So I'm just going to scatter a few into this border because really there's not a lot of room and I don't want to compromise their ability to grow by having them too crowded. So that means I'm gonna take you to a different part of the foodscape to get the rest of these sown. And I know it's going to be so beautiful. I can't wait until spring. So let me show you my process for getting these seeded. So first of all, I just want to reiterate, poppies of all kind are best to be direct sown because they don't transplant that well. And though these aren't technically poppy, this is Escholtia californica, these fit into that same category as plants that develop tap roots. And that's why you really shouldn't buy these pre-grown at a garden center. Instead, just invest in the seeds. Now, you can see there's not a lot of seed in each one of these packs, which is generally disappointing, considering they were $1.78 a piece, and it only has about 25 seeds in it. It's making me feel pretty good about the poppy packages that I put together. <laughs> so you saw how small these seeds are, and that's the indication that they need to be really close to the surface. And in general, I just recommend for all types of poppies, don't cover the seed up. That's particularly important for Papaver somniferum, the poppy that I typically grow, which gets really tall, you know, like four foot tall, blooms late April through the month of May. Obviously the California poppies are significantly smaller, but their flower power is really remarkable, totally worth growing, but remember to put them in the front of the border because they will get overrun by other plants. Now, because there's so few seeds in this packet, I am just going to gently sprinkle them again right along the edge. I have found over the years that they really like growing adjacent to these bottles. And I know a lot of people like to make comments about my bottle walls, but the bottom line is I'm recycling and my county isn't. And um, actually the bottles create a microclimate. They retain heat when the sun shines through the glass and it keeps this border uh, like five degrees warmer than other places that don't have bottles adjacent. So that's one of the big advantages of just putting your <laughs> recycled wine bottles out into your garden. All right, I, that, sowing seeds is so anticlimactic. Um, I'm constantly finding myself like <laughs> incapable of like, okay, it's done because it didn't look like I did anything at all. But that's the whole point. And now that they've been sown, don't do anything else to it. Don't cover them with mulch. Uh, if you want to mulch, wait until after they germinate. We've been really, really dry here. So I actually am planning on watering all of this in. And I'm suspecting that it'll probably be two, maybe three weeks before the seed really germinates and starts growing. Hopefully we will get some rain. Usually here in North Carolina, we're very wet at this time of year. And we haven't really had measurable rain in several months. And we are in a La Nina system, which means it's sort of warm and dry. So don't put the sprinklers away yet. Anyhow, 
Let's move into another area of my garden so I can scatter the rest of these Escholtia californica seeds once and for all and get these out of my seed collection for the season. So I've decided that this border is going to be where I focus the rest of the California poppies right along the edge and then I'm going to do the tall poppies, Pepever somniferum, behind them. But first, I have to cut down all this lantana, which has been perennial for me, so I'm not pulling it out. I'm just gonna cut back all this material that's been frosted so that I will have bare ground for the seed sowing process. along the edge for the California poppies and in the center for the bread seed poppies, Pepaver somniferum. All right, I'm gonna start with the Pepaver somniferum, also called bread seed poppies. And these, are, these grow quite tall. Um, so I'm gonna put these in the back of the border, I'm just literally Throwing seeds into these couple of open areas help fill in these gaps. And now I'm going to follow up with a front planting of Thai Silk California Poppy and Mission Bells California Poppy. The Thai Silk is just a double flowered form. I think these will be really pretty mixed together. Again, these seed packets don't have a ton of seeds in them. So I think this is the perfect spot to be able to get these both growing. I'm just gonna According to the seed pack, it says 10 to 14 days for germination. So I think that falls right into what I was saying. I think at this time of year, we're at the beginning of December, usually at two, two, two and a half, three weeks is about what you should expect for germination rates. Again, here in zone seven, but this information applies to zone six through nine. You know, people who live in zone five, these are actually summer plants. Well, now that the seed is sown, there's really nothing else for me to do. And that's where the anticlimactic part comes in. These seeds really do best with light for germination, so you don't want to rake over them, you don't want to walk in the bed, you don't want to mulch. You can mulch after they germinate. And I'd recommend just doing a very light layer of something like triple shred hardwood. And I always get questions about people wondering about more leaves falling on them. And in general, I haven't found that to be a huge issue, but I don't have so much leaf litter that it's completely covering the surface once I've sown the plants. Now, one thing that I have done in the past is just take a blower, blow the leaf litter away, and you could certainly do that, but I think waiting until November, December, when most of the leaves have fallen, you'll probably have better success and you won't have to constantly fight all those deciduous leaves that are falling. Now the final step for this is just to get it watered in. And you usually, I don't water anything in the months of December, January, February, but honestly, I can't remember a time when the ground was this parched particularly in December with really short days. We just haven't had any good rainfall. So I am definitely recommending that if you're dry like I am, go ahead and start pulling out the hoses and you know either water by hand or turn on the sprinklers, but make sure that the seed 
is able to get in contact with, with moist soil so that it can successfully germinate and grow out. Again, ordinarily, this is not something that we deal with this season, but um, we do have rain in the forecast later this week. Fingers crossed it does arrive and um, we, you know, can kind of get our plants up and growing a little faster than they are currently. But this just might be a dry year for those of us gardening in the southeast, so just be aware of that. Now remember, this advice is primarily for people living in zones six through nine. And that's simply because poppies are very sensitive to extreme heat and they will typically die if we try to grow these as a spring crop into the summer. Now for people in colder climates, you're gonna take this information and apply it next spring when the snow melts and your ground thaws. But for those of us in warm climates, we have to grow poppies as a cool season crop, otherwise we won't ever be able to enjoy their blooms. Now if you found this video to be helpful, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And be sure to subscribe to the Breathe a Plant Lady YouTube channel for regular updates in my weekly garden tours. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Happy gardening.